In this video I'll be making a creamy chicken and broccoli soup which was a challenge laid down to me by the YouTube channel Eating Good in the Woods. Check out his channel which is linked in the comments down below. Here's a quick recap on the challenge that was laid down. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, no, I've had enough. I have absolutely had enough. I am throwing down the gauntlet. I'm drawing a line in the sand. I'm calling in the law. I have had enough. But there's this guy in Wales, like that's even a country, that calls himself Chef Ben. And let's do a little challenge, Chef Ben. But Ben, I want to issue you a challenge. Playing up here is one of my videos. It's the uh, creamy broccoli and chicken soup, which I think is fantastic. Everyone I've fed it to thinks it's fantastic. Here's the rules. You've got a week, Ben. And you can't take away anything from my recipe. You can only add to it. I want you to take my recipe and make it as per. Make it exactly how it is in the video. But I want you to upscale it so that you could get the 10 bucks a bowl for this in one of your fancier restaurants. Do you accept? So let's see what the eating good in the woods recipe is. For this recipe, you're going to need two cups of rotisserie chicken that has been shredded, one tablespoon of garlic powder, one cup of milk. You're going to need at least five stalks of broccoli, six cups of chicken stock, and in the pot up top there, that is two large chopped potatoes, one large chopped onion, and the stalks of the broccoli chopped and you're also going to need a flathead screwdriver well i'll take your word for it on the screwdriver but apart from that here's the rest of the ingredients i've noticed the eating good in the woods recipe uses garlic powder normally this is something that i would keep for making things like marinades and rubs but if it's in your recipe let's give it a whirl to begin with, I'm going to get a steamer pot, you'll see why later, and then put a little splash of olive oil in, followed by the onions, potato, broccoli stalks, and the garlic powder I'm going to actually add in now, although Eating Good in the Woods adds his towards the end. I've also added a little splash of salt now, just to help the flavours develop as we cook the veg. To begin with, I'm going to place the vegetables over a medium heat, give them a quick stir just to get the oil coated, and then I'm going to place a lid over it. Normally for a steamer pot, I would use a solid lid to contain all the steam, but just so you can see what's going on, I've switched it for a glass lid. After a few minutes you'll start to see some steam being generated. It's good at this point just to take the lid off and give it a quick stir. Remember, while sweating, what we're trying to do is just begin the cooking process of the vegetables to release some of the flavours, but it's important that we don't actually let the veg colour or burn during this process. Once your veg mixture has had a good sweat, take the lid off, give it another good stir just to make sure nothing's stuck to the bottom, and then add in our chicken stock. You can also see, as I've added the chicken stock, I've just put a splash of water in the bottom of the jug just to make sure all the stock has been taken out of the jug, and then put the lid back on and bring up to the boil. Don't forget, if you'd like to see the original recipe for this soup, go over to Eating Good in the Woods YouTube channel and check it out. Once your soup base has come up to the boil, turn it down to a low simmer. It's important not to overboil the veg mix and let it cook at its own pace. Otherwise, overboiling it could actually affect the taste at the end of the recipe. And then take a steamer, place it over the top of your simmering mixture, and then add in the broccoli and then cover with the lid. This is to allow the broccoli to cook without discoloring too much. And also, by using the steam from the soup, it also uses the chicken flavour, so you don't lose any flavour out of the broccoli. Once broccoli is cooked, check over the knife to make sure it is nice and tender. Remove from the heat straight away so it doesn't lose any colour. And then check your soup. If all the vegetables are nice and soft, also turn this off the heat and remove.
Next stage is to liquidise your soup base. I'm using a stick blender here. You can use a jug blender if you have one. This will give a much smoother result, but a stick blender is just what I had to hand on the day I shot this. The next stage is to add in your cooked broccoli and the milk and liquidise again. Eating Good in the Woods keeps his broccoli florets whole, but for this soup I'm actually going to add them all in and liquidise. Here's where I'm going to start making my own little tweaks to the soup to make it unique to myself. I'm going to add in some Stilton. If you look on the top of the jar here, it tells you to remove the wax seal. I'm genuinely dumbfounded that some people need that advice, but hey ho. We're only going to add enough Stilton here just to give a nice sort of subtle flavour to it. We don't want to overpower it too much. Obviously, if you don't like Stilton, you can leave it out. Although this would be a great soup, you could add something like a cheddar or something if you did fancy having a cheesy taste to it. Give the Stilton a mix through with your stick blender and then check the seasoning. I added a touch of pepper here, but apart from that, I was more than happy with the taste. And then I decided that the green wasn't quite as I would have liked it for a soup. So I started by adding in handfuls of spinach whilst raw, the heat from the soup will actually cook it. And then I've kept blending in more and more spinach until I was happy with the colour. In total, it took six handfuls of spinach to re reach the desired colour. Don't forget, for all sorts of cooking and baking, hit that subscribe button and turn on the notifications bell. And don't forget to see the original recipe for this. Check out Eating Good in the Woods YouTube channel. Link is in the description below. As you add your spinach, add handfuls and blend in between adding each handful, otherwise the raw spinach could potentially jam up your stick blender, which would cause issues. And also, you want to just keep adding the spinach until you reach the desired colour that you wish to have. Once your soup has reached your desired colour, it's now time to strain it. Take a conical strainer. If you don't have a conical strainer, you can always improvise with a sieve. And then with the stick blender on the slowest setting, slowly start drip feeding the soup through. This will help to filter out anything such as the spinach stalks, which may have not been fully incorporated into the mix and would make for an unpleasant experience if you've got one while you're eating the soup. Once you pass the soup, give it a nice stir. You should have a nice, lovely, smooth soup at this stage. Now it's time to add in the cups of shredded chicken. The chicken I've actually used is chicken that I picked off a roast chicken carcass and froze down for a later use as it seemed a shame to waste it. Once the chicken has been stirred through, check the temperature. The soup is actually still hot enough here for me to just serve it straight away. Just be very cautious when reheating a soup like this as any rise in temperature will cause the green to actually start to turn yellow and you will end up with a very nasty colour should it boil. Now it's time to serve the soup, you can use any bowl you like. I happen to use this beautiful shaped one that I had, although I'll be honest here, if I was just having it at home, I'd probably just have it straight out of a mug. Finally to garnish, I'm just going to give it a few drops of olive oil over the top Generally I think soups tend to serve themselves so there's no need to sort of do any fancy garnish. And then after that your soup is ready to eat. If you fancy some bread to go with your soup then why not check out my bread making recipe video on the channel. And there we have my take of eating good in the woods chicken and broccoli creamy soup. I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, be sure to like, share and subscribe to the channel and leave a comment down below. Also, don't forget, check out Eating Good in the Woods YouTube channel for lots more cooking that's based around camping. And for my channel, why not check out one of the recipes that are on screen now?